Okay, so uh, welcome to the uh, activism Zoom in uh, World Freedom Alliance. And um, it's a pleasure to give the word. To, uh, let's start with uh, Serena Vedrana. You have something important to, to say, have some focus we need to attend. Yeah, hi to everyone. Uh, just a quick update about the activities that we undertook last week. Through several organizations across Europe, we have uh, uh, prepared, um, let's say, content to get in touch with European parliamentaries, uh, members of European Parliament in regards to uh, vaccination passport regulation proposal, uh, through which we wanted to express uh, opposition to this proposal. So uh, different organization uh, across the Europe has organized in coordinated way and we have sent, I think in 24 hours, 30,000 emails. Uh, so there were complaints from uh, members of European Parliament that their system almost collapsed and they couldn't work thanks to this coordinated action at the European level. So uh, now we will continue with this because uh, they have approved the accelerated procedure for the approval of this, regu this regulation. This uh, discussion in the European Parliament should last at least three to six months because they should assess different aspects of this proposal, including fundamental freedom rights, uh, aspects that concern privacy and security of private data of each European citizens. And of course, uh, not to mention all the scientific, uh, not scientifically uh, supported uh, uh, facts or standpoints behind this uh, vaccination uh, certificate, which anyways, uh, is based on the uh, fact that somebody has been vaccinated or has done PCR test. And we know both that PCR test is absolutely not a valid diagnostic tool to assess the uh, uh, presence of virus, any virus, as far as we know, the, the likelihoodness of uh, 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 not, uh, pro like uh, the likelihoodness of error with PCR tests is around 96, 95%. And on the other side, we know that vaccines haven't been proved yet to be effective. We don't know yet if they create immunity and for how long. So we are trying to oppose this uh, proposal from different aspects, legal a regulatory framework of the EU and from scientific standpoint. So we are continuing to coordinate at the European level and for the next month or so, we will continue to be in touch with uh, European uh, parliamentary members and we will also extend our actions to our national parliaments because these decisions are taken also at the national level. So this is from my side. Thank you very much, Serena. Nigel, will you continue, please? Yeah, I've got some personal things and some sort of um, global things in the UK as well. So I mentioned last time that I, I had a court case pending uh, last week and the case was dropped. So um, they had no evidence against me to say that I'm this dreadful man that speaks to people and embraces people in public, which is what the police have recorded. So no, no court case. I'm not going to prison and I haven't got a £10,000 fine. So and, and the most beautiful thing was that the, the lawyer who worked for me and Piers Corbyn, because we were kind of um, charged together, he invoked the Magna Carta, which is, is from English history. It, it's when the when, when the it wasn't the peasants rebelling, actually, it was the lords rebelling against the king. And he used that piece of law. And it's sort of, that's beautiful. I love that. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a free man, sort of living in a, a very dictatorial country. Now, the, the most beautiful global thing in the UK is that 100,000 plus people marched in London on the 20th. Now, I've been on most of the other rallies. The most recent one I went on, there were a thousand people. And then I didn't go to the next one because it was kind of depressing to go all the way to London, which is a good two and a half hours from here. And I, I hadn't been, but I was over in Ireland, but a hundred thousand people gathered. And I thought, well, what's the difference? And I think the difference is now that whereas before we were like little, little groups meeting separately, going to London, and then the police were hitting us over the head and smashing our heads open and things, this time, 
now we're getting together in light hubs so distribution centers for the light newspaper so we get delivered the news newspaper to our homes people then come to us we distribute the newspaper and then people take the newspaper out and we use that as an as an, as a, as a way to get together um, we could use the excuse that it's a business uh, although i don't think anyone of any one of us have needed to do that but because we've got that almost like um, the Christians do their home churches. It's almost like that. So we've got all these little home groups all over the UK and, and that's giving people strength to come out onto the streets because we're going together. It's, it's, I mean, I think that's why we got 100,000 this time. And, and there's another rally on the 24th of um, April now. And the most exciting thing about that is the, the flyer for that demonstration is going to have um, the logos of all the different groups that are now working together. World Freedom Alliance is going to be there. And it's, it's just terrific that all these groups are now, we're meeting together, we're having Zoom, like we are here, we're having Zoom meetings together, we're planning together, we're looking for overlaps with, between the groups and um, it's getting really quite exciting. Um, on a local level to me, and this is, um, I, I think what we've got to really emphasize is this is not about a virus. This is about economics. And um, my local newspaper ha had an article recently that 52 small businesses have closed down. 52, and there are, there are only 180,000 people live in my city. And 52, I mean, it will be more now, that was a few weeks ago. But that that is an enormous thing because my, my city, people come here because there are lots of independent little shops and coffee shops and restaurants. They've gone. And we've got Starbucks and Costa and McDonald's and KFC and all these globalist companies that are just providing all of our food and entertainment. It's, it's absolutely vile. Um, in theory, tomorrow, um, the government is relaxing the rules against us. Um, I, I never listen to the mainstream media, so I've no idea what the new rules are, but apparently that we can go and sit in each other's gardens. But what was great was um, the British people are quite good, actually, and, and everyone was in each other's gardens at the weekend because they said, well, it's nearly, it's nearly the 1st of April, so we're going to do it now anyway. So that's a great, great thing. Um, I can't see what I've written here. Um, Oh, no, no, on, a, on, a, on a personal level, again, um, I've, 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 I keep being, I'm an osteopath and I keep being um, messaged by osteopaths saying, so pleased with what you're doing, Nigel, you're being so brave. And I, and I said to them, look, come on, I can't do this on my own, let's get together. So we, we formed a telegram group, group now and there are, at the last check, there were 25 osteopaths and there are a lot more. Osteopaths, were always against vaccination. That's how we started. We were against vaccination. We were against um, pharmaceutical medicine. That's why, that's why we're different from doctors. And our governing body now is telling us via the National Health Service in Britain that we have to, because we're medical professionals, we have to promote vaccinations. And, and lots of us are going to refuse to do that, which is, which is great. We're going to stand up and I think we're going to probably split the profession down the middle which needs to happen because because we cannot be promoting vaccination it's 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 not what we do so that is a really exciting move forward because we need in our new world we need a new form of, of of a health system and i think i think osteopaths homeopaths naturopaths we're going to be a big significant part of that so yeah things in england are and the sun's shining and i've got sunburn because i was out in the sun yesterday so i'm really really happy about that so yeah things are good in britain Okay. Thanks. Thanks very much, Nigel. Some, some, some good news. And Wayne from Greece, please. Yes, right. Um, well, um, there are two of us here, but not, not uh, who I was expecting. Um, Olga has come from Kyoto, and Olga is a good friend. Um, but who we were expecting was Zafiria from Sparta, or Sparti as we say in Greek, because she is a delib she is a, she has prepared and has been asked to uh, send or to deliver uh, a collected position from the Greek group of the World Freedom Alliance, uh, which is collaborating with, some, with something called the uh, Hellenic, uh, the Hellenism Network. As a matter of fact, a, a few days ago, last Thursday was Greek National Day and uh, the Hellenism Network and the World Freedom Alliance group of uh, Greece 
work together uh, here in Egina work together. Uh, it was it was very good. Nobody was wearing masks. Uh, it was all outdoors, and it was a uh, you know it was supposed to be against the rules and so on. But uh, it was a very very good um, celebration of uh, of Greek National Day, which uh, befitted the importance of the day and the meaning of the day. Uh, also, well, uh, I'll I'll put up I will put up Zafiria's uh, what. I thought that Safari was going to be speaking, but I, I can't see that she's come yet. Uh, and I don't know if Olga wants to speak. She will say if she wants to speak. Um, <clears throat> uh, there are a number of other issues uh, that I wanted to talk about. Um, one of them, uh, one of them has to do with um, with the discussion about Gert van den Bosch. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, a lot of controversy about uh, about his statements. Many people in our many people in our group actually are, are rather uh, uh, skeptical, but I think the probably the best the best uh, summary of what uh, Gerd van der Bosch has to say is uh, probably the one done by Rob Verkerk, uh, which is um, <clears throat> who who spoke to Gerd van der Bosch for for a, a number of hours before writing what he wrote finally, which was basically supported. Um, I think. Uh, I think that deserves to be on uh, online also. Um, another thing is uh, what's happening in Israel. Now, of course, uh, Israel is really in the firing line at the moment. And I think, um, well, they're going ahead with compulsory vaccine, well, more or less compulsory vaccination because there are lots of uh, pressures on people. Um, one person who has spoken about that is Ilana Rachel Daniel, who actually formed a, a small political party uh, and she spoke she has spoken very very strongly about the or about what is being done in Israel at the moment uh, another person is Gilad Atzmon Gilad Atzmon has also um, he, he he has has a longer standing uh, position of uh, of opposition to well, not to Israel, of course. He's uh, but both of these people are Jewish, of course. And um, uh, Gilad Atzmon has a longer history of being uh, opposed to the priorities or the way that uh, is Israeli policies are implemented. Um, but anyway, I think both of those people. Actually, I really think that the World Freedom Alliance should ask uh, Gilad Atzmon if he wants to be a member. This is something I would say to uh, to Mads. Of course, Mads is. Mads, because Mads has an orientation towards parties, he might also be interested in, in talking to Ilana Rachel Daniel, Daniel because she has got a party. Um, but in, in any case, I think Gilad Atzmon is someone who should be invited to join the World Freedom Alliance. Um, now, in Greece, there are two, two functions going to be held today in the evening. One is going to be in Kyoto. I, I don't know if Olga wants to talk about that because uh, Kyoto is where she lives and she's organizing it. Uh, the other one is, uh, is run by a group called Thesis, uh, who are also going to be <laughs> on at the same time. So they're both going to be competing for an audience this evening. Uh, the Thesis is trying to organize all of the groups that are opposed to the vaccination policies. Uh, <clears throat> They have a they have a rather different orientation, um, but here in uh, here in Egina anyway, the two groups, the World Freedom Alliance and the Hellenism Network, have uh, worked together. Um, anyway, I don't know if I, if I should take up any more time. That's basically what I wanted to say, and I will put uh, I will put on the chat. I will put all of the links to the things that I've mentioned on the chat. Thanks very much, Wayne. Much appreciated. Olga, did you have something you would like to add uh, on the part of Greece? Uh, good morning. Good morning to all of you. Uh, we are organizing something for tonight. Um, a lawyer, an activist lawyer, is going to give a lecture. Um, he's going to talk about our constitutional rights. Uh, I mean, human rights we have forgotten during this period of time because of the pandemic, so-called. So this is going to be held tonight. Uh, some people from Egina uh, are going to participate. 
Olga, do you, are you going to put it up on the chat so that people, are you going to put the link up on the chat? Uh, we what? have already put the link. Well, on the chat here. Ah, on the chat here. Sorry, but because Piros is organizing it, um, I have to ask him. Um, Wayne, don't you have yes. this link? I do have it, yes. I can put it up if you like. Okay, okay, put it if you like. Yeah. So of course, of course, of course, it will be in Greek. People should know that it's, the discussion is going to be in Greek. Yes. Now this is for tonight. Um, what else would you like me to tell you? Well, generally, I, I, fear is everywhere. Yes. Fear and terror is in the TV on the TV screen, and old people are afraid. Uh, this is what was so good about the Greek uh, National Day celebrations in Egypt. You know, there was no fear at all. It was marvelous. Okay, and, 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 you are lucky. And, and you know, eighty percent of the people were not wearing masks. Also, very good. Um, okay, last thing here in Kyoto. Yeah. I mean, I am on a village now, but I most of the time I live in Kyoto, a seaside town. Um, most of the young people were walking by the seaside without masks as well uh, on Sunday evening. Uh, young people are not afraid. Old people are very afraid because they watch TV and they impose on us their fear, old people. I mean, grandparents and parents, that's it. Thanks a lot, Olga. And now, man. Hi, thank you. Yes, hello. <laughs> Hi, hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> uh, my name is Monica Helleberg, and uh, I'm the chairman of World Freedom Alliance. I'm activist in Sweden, but also focusing a lot on the on just supporting all of you and and the organizations we're working with to bring out important actions, such as the one that uh, um, is done in, in Italy and by Children's Health Defense, etc. So uh, I'm very happy that we had. Uh, a talk actually with Iana also that you talked about Wayne. We had a a live on our on our Facebook, uh, World Freedom Alliance Facebook with her and people from Israel uh, before the discussion in the European Parliament and the decision about the Green Pass that we had. Um, now we're up at around two hundred eighty thousand views on this video. So please help to share it even wider. Because in that we we were we heard the you know the cry for help from Israel where uh, the COVID pass is already being used for serious serious discriminations. They were telling about, for instance, a mother uh, where the child was going into emergency surgery, uh, like he had a, a really serious brain like head injury, and the mother couldn't come into the hospital because she wasn't vaccinated, for instance. And, and this is uh, whether or not, you know, whatever you think about the green pass, it's not going to be used in the right way. And it's, it's, it shouldn't happen, period, because um, it's going to, um, it's only used for power. There is no mm -hmm. scientific basis on it if it's if they even openly say that you can still be contagious when you take the vaccine then where's the point with it where's the there's no scientific base there's no logic ba base to this this is just about control this is just about economy this is just about creating a medical apartheid period and that's what we're seeing in israel we need to look to israel to see what is happening and it's so crazy it's happening there of all places where they should know, where they should learn, where they was, were treated the same way in, in the Second World War. So they forgot. Uh, the thing is, we just don't want to go there and we see what's already happening in, in uh, Israel. So we need to join all our forces, every single person listening to this, share this, encourage people to, to uh, stand up against this because we're not, agreeing to medical apartheid um, and we're also in the world freedom alliance uh, together with a lot of uh, people all over all over the world now turning to 
supporting small businesses and shop owners. And this has already happened in a lot of countries like open up, uh, open up days. But uh, we're, we're aiming for 1st of May to unlock the world to really support uh, all shop owners to open up and to stand their ground because we're not going to let uh, the small businesses to, uh, to to be devastated so we need to support each other there um, and uh, we're just working it out more but I think it, it's the best is if we all just aim for this and we, we take our own in initiative and we will of course share our material and our strategies with anyone that wants to participate in this. Uh, so more information will come about that. And uh, otherwise, in the World Freedom Alliance, we're seeing a great expansion. It's amazing to see all the all the people that have just had enough that are just joining us in in peace and in uh, collaboration and um, and community, because that's what we need to stand in just to support each other, share best practice, engage in the um, different groups that are forming both locally and internationally now and um, we're they're un outnumbered we need to just remember that <laughs> we are more <laughs> so thank you very much that's all from me thank you thanks Manika and will you go on and tell us about what's going on in Spain Yes, uh, I can tell from the kind of micro perspective of from my community, what I see happening is um, there's more and more people walking around without masks, which is brilliant. Uh, they have loosened out a lot of the restrictions. So business can, business, businesses can stay uh, open later. Uh, there's lots of more people just visibly everywhere. Uh, but the thing is that as, as they are loosening the restrictions, they are still implementing other things like for instance two days ago in the official state bulletin they published that they've now removed the exemption to the mask rule of 1.5 meter social distance so you used to have this little kind of you know uh loophole in the law that as long as you can maintain 1.5 meter distance from others you don't have to wear a mask now they removed it so it means that even if you're on the beach or in nature if you're anywhere at all outside, you have to at all times wear masks. Uh, but they still have the medical exemptions in the law. But this is something that the media is not telling you. They are, they are just saying it's now obligatory everywhere. But I just checked it yesterday, actually. And it says there that um, if you've got any kind of illness or um, you know, a breathing condition or allergy that can be aggravated by the use of masks, you don't have to wear it. So it's the same medical exemptions as before or the nature of activity if you're doing sports or you're eating or drinking or talking on the phone or you have a, you know, an, a force majeure, you know, where, where you, you're in pain or in anxiety and you must take the, the mask off because you have urgent need to breathe, you can do that. But they, they leave this out from all the, the media. They're just saying the mask is now ob ob obligatory everywhere. So it's kind of a crazy paradox. And uh, the police are also doing their best to try to create these kind of uh, terror examples. So there's been two cases of police brutality towards women in the last week in Spain. And one of them is someone I actually know. And what happened is the woman went to train without a mask because she has a medical exemption. And uh, the police came into, into the train, beat her up and uh, arrested her for 20 hours. And she was absolutely terrorized. And a similar thing is actually caught on film from Benidorm, where a woman walking outside without a mask was beaten up by two cops. So unfortunately, uh, they are creating these kind of terror examples of this is what will happen to you if you don't have a mask on. And because of that, there's this polarization that some people really are going crazy towards those without a mask. And on the other hand, the summer is coming and there's more people taking off the mask. So it's a bit of a kind of a crazy situation. Um, otherwise, we have been campaigning about the mask exemption actually just yesterday and on, on uh, Friday, we were on the streets in our local community and just sharing people that these are the official exemptions in the law. And a lot of people were not aware of it. So I feel like that's just very important to, to put it out there. We were saying, look, they are trying to make us hate each other and segregate our societies based on these different things. And that we have to make sure that nobody's discriminated. That if you see someone without a mask, you know, don't straight away think they're doing it because they're obnoxious and whatever, you know, whatever's the main mainstream narrative that they're selfish. 
but they may well have a medical condition and an illegal exemption. So, you know, please uh, respect everyone's rights. So that's been our work. And also we have been trying to build bridges to the police a lot. And uh, we've been going into the different commissaries around Spain and sharing information about informed consent to them. So they also understand that all medical, exam um, medical interventions have to be based on informed consent. And we've given them forms drafted by lawyers. So if they themselves don't want to get the experimental vaccine, they know how to ask for informed consent instead. Because if you decline it, you get your name on a list and we don't know what's going to be done with that list. So that's another campaign we're doing is just sharing to everyone that look, there is something in between yes and no, and that is demanding informed consent, which they can't give as we know that the, all the vaccines are experimental. So yeah, that's, that's my uh, two cents from Spain. Thanks very much, Hannah. And of all people here in this chat, I think you are an expert on the 10 stages of genocide. I just went through them yesterday and uh, seven of them are already here in Denmark right now. So it's, um, it's a, a very serious situation and the enemy have their back against the wall because if they open up, which they should, because there's no flu in the summer, then we'll all be looking at each other and going, what what did we do why did we do that and we, everybody will have a collective epiphany and wake up so my bet is that they're trying to keep the lockdown and our the best bet we can do is to uh, be braver and stick to the exemptions the health exemptions um so i think that is um what i will uh, encourage people to do and we're fighting like uh, serena uh, who's uh, the leader in that serena uh, vidrana uh, we're fighting the Corona passport being implemented in the EU, and it is already implemented in Denmark, uh, or they're trying to implement it here in Denmark. But let's hear what's going on in uh, the Baltics. Janis, would, would you go on, please, and tell us a little bit what's going on with you and, and, and Latvia? Hi, nice to meet you, everyone. Um, actually, uh, there are a lot of uh, like a lot of very small things which are quite promising. Um, many, many people are against vaccines. Only some uh, five, maybe 7% of our population has is willing to take the vaccine. And now they're opening up the large uh, vaccination facilities in the markets and, and, and state stadiums and, and all kinds of things. And, and we'll see how it goes. So not, not many are willing to vaccinate. Uh, uh, then on the 4th of May, uh, this is our Latvia's uh, the Independence Day. Uh, we are planning an event. I, uh, something uh, something should, should be there, uh, either uh, a protest. Uh, we are now thinking about the form, but uh, so that we hope that we will be, uh, a lot of people will be there because Latvia is also, uh, people are extremely tired about all these COVID measures uh, and, and more and more information uh, uh, coming up uh, about them being illogical and, and irrational. And uh, also from those, those people who don't understand the full picture about the, the big reset and everything, they still understand uh, are starting to doubt about the, the stupidity of those measures. So um, actually uh, this, I will be, I, I'm very short, not to waste time. This, these are the main things and uh, uh, so far. So we'll see how the 4th of May is going on. And is there any decision about the, the, glo about the global date of the next demonstration? decided i'm not aware maybe someone else will uh, will answer that well uh, uh, meanwhile i would like to ask ask you maybe you know something about what's going on in in belarus uh, in white russia and um, and also in in russia i hear that uh, of course the lockdowns have stopped so completely in russia and uh, and uh, belarus never had any do you have anything you would like to yeah. inform us about being geographically a little bit closer than we are you might know some more uh, actually, uh, I know from friends that uh, who live in Russia that they are like um, 
there are no uh, all everything is open uh, all the cafes discos everything uh, also a few weeks ago there was a huge event you know when russia took over the the crimea uh, and, and they are celebrating that so they had a stadium full of people no masking nothing mm, so uh, that's that's really good news mm, but uh, I have one contact in, uh, in, in Russia um, who is also a freedom fighter. Um, uh, so I'll have to talk to him to get more, more details. So that's, that's uh, for the moment everything I know. Thank you so much, uh, Yanis. Much appreciated. Now, Willem is not there. Prada, would you like to continue maybe? Tell us a bit more about what's going on. If you if you turn off your uh, turn on your mic, it'll be very helpful for us. I was I was uh, respecting uh, you and okay. So uh, nice to see you all. It's a pleasure to to be this Wednesday. It keeps courage. Uh, one thing I want to share with you because maybe I'm good in between. I shared uh, Ilana's message to friends in Israel who are very openly discussing uh, their elder people. Jews from Romania, uh, they are uh, very clear about the problems with the vaccine and other things like that. But when it comes to doubting their government and uh, Israel is their place of shelter in the world. And that there's such a conflict. There's such a conflict, they just, you know, it's like you go and uh, yeah, you're right, the vaccines uh, are just uh, phony and uh, yes, but we cannot be um, cheated by our government. So I, I wanted to bring this awareness <clears throat> to everybody because I think Israel is a hot spot. Uh, they, they, they are put in the front line and uh, you know, it's this message, you know, they. They know what the J on your passport means, and they think what happens now is so different that it's acceptable. They will tell us this thing. So we have to be careful not to, uh, you know, to, to see that there's that side of people who are on our sides, but it's difficult and we, uh, we need that. Okay, but that's one side. The second in Germany, it's very military. <laughs> We have since one year a, a Krisenstab, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, military terminology in the university and, and uh, but it's very interesting the reaction of people. They already apprehend that they were, will be ab abused. You know, that, uh, let's not ask for too much uh, openness because they will refuse. On base of what? <laughs> On base of what? Don't ask, you know, <laughs> you know. So I think uh, we need ma uh, many psychologists. <laughs> Frankly, we need many psychologists because there's, there's a psychosis of masses, which uh, it's obvious when it's deploying, but it takes science. I think these guys have the science to manipulate in one direction, you know, to create with small pushes, big effects of uh, paranoia. But I think the reverse is possible too. And I think it's a serious problem. So, so spread the word because I, uh, you know, we feel it and we know it's uh, happening, but I think they are professional. Uh, this is the second point. In Romania, there is much violence. It's terrible. Uh, police, uh, several, you know, a few, but some, some uh, young people have been killed by abuse of police. They, they got without a mask and they took them in a corner, beat on them. Two weeks later, they were dead, dead of COVID. Uh, things like this do happen. Uh, abuses in hospital. On the other hand, there's a legal opposition. They are now sue some hospitals uh, where there, there have been, uh, you know, this forced um, uh, air intake and then the patients were reacting and then they uh, sedated them until they died because it was the wrong measure and, and it uh, 
created edemas on, on the brain. And uh, eventually, uh, nurses and uh, doctors from the same hospital uh, just went out to the law. So that's another aspect. And uh, I'm, I'm looking for ways to bind them into our movement. There has been many, there have been many street movements on Saturday, uh, some with, with violence, uh, but there were, you know, it was like Berlin. There were, uh, uh, only there were uh, called two days in advance, but it was like a million people and press said 100 people, <laughs> thousand people in 24 cities. Uh, it's a sign they want to continue that. There is beyond that not much direction, but it's a sign that people, because the measures are, uh, they increase the measures. Uh, and there's another interesting thing that happened. So there's a guy who is our Dorsten, you know, like Dorsten is a guy in Germany. There is a Romania guy whose name is Arafat. <laughs> He's a cousin. And uh, he started as a pretty useful citizen. He studied in Romania, he speaks Romanian. Now he's a chief of, of uh, uh, measures for the pandemic. He is totally terrorist. And uh, so uh, they, uh, they have a uh, night, total night lockdown, which goes from, it was first uh, after 10 o'clock. Now they went down to seven o'clock in the evening. You cannot go out. And they ask him, why is the virus more virulent in the night when there are less people? And uh, he doesn't need to explain. Uh, so now there is a, uh, the, the lawyer of the people, there's a dysfunction, some kind of ombudsman, if you want, you know, uh, but the general ombudsman of the country who came and said, you have a legal uh, error when you when you decided these new measures, he decided them in January, and you did not publish them. So I don't think they should be applicable. <laughs> so now there is this kind of legal game going on too. Uh, so these are my news. And I said, I have also a question and a proposal. I'm a little bit the science maniac. And I feel a need to to gather information about real cases of disease and real cases of post-vaccination uh, effects. You know, because they are so poorly documented and I'm sure uh, there are sporadic spread efforts to, to uh, gather some information, but uh, at the same time, it's certainly not uh, welcomed by, by our authorities. So I just, uh, for the moment, just want to raise this um, issue to everybody. Maybe if you have uh, ideas, I, what I can offer is um, help with uh, computer science to, you know, to, to make platforms and, and also think about the safety and everything. So that is my input. Thank you. Right. Thanks a lot, Preda. And now uh, Monica will talk a little bit about Berlin. If you turn on the off or the mic. Okay. While we wait for for Monica, uh, I can just comment to this uh, while we're waiting for Monica, if that's fine, because uh, I know Children's Health Defense they have a adverse events vaccine tracker. So you, if, if you don't know about that, that would be great to spread the word about what they're doing because they have exactly. they have that already. And also in the medical focus group of the World Freedom Alliance, I know they are tracking the adverse events. And, and I want to add something because uh, we in the World Freedom Alliance, we're working together with, of course, the um, World Doctors Alliance and the um, America's frontline doctors and also Hippocrate in Italy. And why are people not talking about the cures? That whatever the symptoms come from, from the COVID symptoms, that that's a debate, what the actual, what it actually is. But there are cures where out of, for instance, in, in America, out of 5,000, only two died. And those were the ones that went into the hospital that didn't complete the their treatment. In Italy, they had 6,000 people, no one died when they used their protocols. 
And why is this not on the head news everywhere? There's nothing, to be, there's nothing to be afraid of. There are cures. Uh, we don't need any vaccine passport. We don't need any lockdowns. If, the, if there are cures, sure. we don't need anything. Then we don't, don't need to debate about the PCR test and whatever. No one needs to die, period. Then there's nothing to fear. We can go back to normal. And yeah, just the point that I want to... You mean Invermectin <laughs> and, and the HCQ and these things. Yeah. Thank you very much, Monica. And um, yes. Monica, please uh, continue. Yes, hello, everybody. My name is Monica. I would like to report what was happening in Berlin on the 28th uh, of March. Uh, it's a historical uh, day because it's one year celebration of uh, democratic resistance in uh, Germany and it started on the 28th that uh, a few people went to the Rosa Luxemburg Platz with the basic right uh, book uh, uh, fundamental rights uh, of Germany in their hand standing there and demonstrating and uh, there it became obvious that they were not allowed to hold this book in their hand so uh, they founded a newspaper. It's called uh, Demokratischer Widerstand. And it's a very good idea be because paper is uh, something you cannot erase out of the world. And um, unfortunately, it is yet uh, just in German, but I, I'm sure that it will uh, be developing because it has uh, become uh, one of the biggest uh, print media in Germany, which is very good. And the good idea is also to distribute this newspaper and uh, at the rallies to, um, to inform the people. And um, another very good idea was they, they made a magazine. I show it to you, it's very cool. And there are um, contributions from Giorgio um, Agamben, um, Uli Gellermann, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Dr. Vodak and lots of others. And it's only in German, but with great photographs. And it, it's a, such a great idea because it shows the movement, what was happening throughout the entire year with great photographs. And, and, and this will, you know, I, could be in any country you could do that. And I think we should, like it's maybe an inspiration and I could put the link uh, down here so you can have a look at it. And yeah, so I wanted to share that and also that uh, the Easter lockdown was called out very hardly uh, from Merkel last week. And uh, they debated into the night until 2.30 uh, and then next day they turned everything back. And uh, it was the first time in 16 years that Merkel officially um, said she was sorry. And uh, I, don't, I think it is an, a distraction, of course. So um, in, in Germany, it's not allowed to, to demonstrate without masks. And they are very hard uh, with violence, police violence. You have to wear FFP2 masks. And the good idea of the demonstrators, at least in Berlin, is that they started to do marches and they go out to, not in the center, uh, or they go out to the suburbs, other kitses, you know, and then they also hold speeches in Turkish or other languages. And this is really great. And then they march to the center. So people get more informed. And I thought that was a very good idea to, to share as well internationally. Maybe it could be a good idea. Yeah, that's from Berlin. Thanks. Thanks very much, Monica. I just have a couple of things I want to, to um, finish off with here in our bi-weekly recording. And one of them is that um, uh, it's a pleasure that I'm uh, working with uh, Catherine Austin Fitz and um, and other economists, and um, she, I, I saw her over the weekend, and she very rightly pointed out that it's also important to remember that this is, above all, a monetary event. It's, of course, difficult uh, to remember when our government indirectly or even directly is trying to kill us with, um, with, with uh, experimental vaccines and uh, with lockdown measures that's damaging to our health our kids are committing suicide. There is a lot of uh, a, a, a steepening 
amount of, of child abuse, um, elderly people are dying of sorrow of not meeting their, their families. It's an absolute atrocity and crimes against humanity. It's mind boggling. And um, of course, then it's very difficult to remember what's really going on. And it's the same, same thing, all wars, all revolutions and all crises have been created by the same ruthless oligarchs. And it's, and it can, it's a monetary event. And what they're trying to do now is they want to have the mark of the beast. They want to have either a digital ID on, in your body or they will do it with the uh, nanoparticles in the vaccines. And I'm not making it up. There are patents on it. Uh, that is, I'm totally convinced that that is what they want to do. They want to, they are talking openly about this great new reset where, where you, are, uh, you are owning nothing and you are going to be happy, right? So this is, uh, this is very important and we see it uh, happening in practice. We're seeing the oligarchs, the super rich becoming more wealthy. We're seeing the middle class being decimated across the board. So it's very important always also to remember it's a monetary event. And um, we have to, to stop that. And that's why this group is so important. We're bringing in together all, all you uh, lovely, wonderful, active people from all over Europe. And uh, it's very important to remember that activism and politics goes hand in hand. And the people in power, I mean, they have been informed over a year now. The PCR test does not work, right? We know that, okay? Uh, lockdowns does not work. Masks does not work. They know that. And they're not taking actions. The politicians are not taking actions. And we're going, of course, to do a last effort now with the Corona passport in the EU. But basically, what we need to do is we need to find new politicians who are not corrupt. And that has to be someone who has been fighting for the people for many years. So it becomes a habit, right? I mean, the politicians, the problem with the politicians is they've all, always taken the easy path. They've always made a career move based on selfishness and their own um, betterment of their own status in society. So they're used to doing whatever is necessary for them personally to get ahead. And they have very little interest in the population. So we need politicians who have shown they're willing to work for years for free for other people than themselves. This is what this group, in my view, is all about. It's about bringing people together who are activists and also willing to understand that activism and politics goes hand in hand. So that's why I think, so we have, basically you have three groups in one. This group is activism, politics, and economics. And the changes what we're going to implement now is going to be that Henna is going to uh, lead every uh, week the, um, the uh, activism and politics group. And I'm going to try to start up and beef up the economics. And we're bringing in, in taxation because that come, goes together with economics. So we're going to start a new group. I'm going to start a new group called economics and taxation. I hope many of you would like to join. And um, I look forward to see this group grow and become even more successful under the leadership of Henna. And these are the words. Thanks a lot for, for joining this recording. And remember, we will win this one, I promise. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> okay.